Good morning, students. Welcome back to the chemistry lesson. Now we'll move on to the next lesson: periodic classification of elements. Totally 118 elements you know. How to arrange the elements in a particular order? In library, the books are neatly arranged in a categories and subcategories. In the same way, how to arrange? A scientist Mendeleev arranged the elements in the periodic function of their atomic masses. But the, in the year 1912, English physicist Henry Moseley done the experiment through X-ray diffraction experiment. Proved that the atomic it is based. It proved that the elements are based upon the atomic number. So the modern periodic law states that the physical and chemical properties of elements are the periodic function of their atomic number. So what are the features of modern periodic table? All the elements are arranged in the increasing order of their atomic number. The horizontal rows are called the periods. There are seven periods in the modern periodic table. The first period is the shortest period because it contains only two elements, hydrogen and helium. The second period contains. It is also a short period. It contains uh, eight elements, lithium to neon. The third period is the short period. It contains eight elements from sodium to argon. The fourth period contains 18 elements. This includes eight normal elements and 10 transition elements from potassium to krypton. The fifth period is a long period. It contains 18 elements. It includes eight normal elements and 10 transition elements from rubidium to xenon. The sixth period is the longest period. It contains 32 elements. It, this includes eight normal elements, ten transition elements, and fourteen inner transition elements. The fourteen inner transition element is called the lanthanide. So, from cesium to radon. The seventh period is the longest period. It is also called as the longest period. This period also accommodates thirty-two elements. It contains eight normal elements and fourteen transition elements and ten. Transition elements and 14 inner transition elements, but recently four elements have been included by IUPAC. The modern periodic table. The modern periodic table is based upon the electronic configuration of the elements. The first period it contains only two elements. The second period, third period, fourth period, fifth period, sixth period. Seventh period and the vertical column from starting from top to bottom are called as groups. First group, second group, three to twelve groups, thirteenth group, fourteenth group, fifteenth group, sixteenth group, seventeenth group, and this is the eighteenth group. This eighteenth group is called as the zero group elements or inert gases or noble gases. At the bottom of the periodic table are called as Lanthanides and actinides. It is called as inner transition element. So, what are periods? The horizontal rows are called as periods. How many periods? There are seven periods in the modern periodic table. What are groups? The vertical column, starting from top to bottom, is called as group. How many groups in the periodic table? There are eighteen groups in the modern periodic table. What are called inner transition elements? The lanthanide and actinide is called the inner transition elements. Then features of group: the vertical column in the periodic table, starting from top to bottom, are called the group. There are 18 group in the periodic table, but the characteristics of elements in each group can be grouped into various families. The first group is called the alkali metals. The second group is called as alkaline earth metals. Three to twelve group is called as transition metals. The thirteenth group is called as boron family. The fourteenth group is called as carbon family. The fifteenth group is called as nitrogen family, and the sixteenth group is called as oxygen family or halogen family. The seventeenth group is called as halogens, and the eighteenth group is called as noble gases. 
or rare gases or inert gases and this noble gases they have the stable electronic configuration so they are these elements are unreactive and in groups some particular group the first group they contain the same number of electrons in the valence shell so the val it, it contains only one electrons in the valence shell so it has the valency one they have the similar chemical properties but the physical properties should vary what are the physical properties boiling point melting point density they vary gradually so these are about the features of groups this lanthanide and actinide are placed at the bottom of the periodic table it is called as inner transition element it forms a part into the group 3 come to the next topic periodic trends in properties the modern periodic table is based upon the electronic configuration of the elements and it helps us to explain the periodic recurrence of physical and chemical properties anything which repeats itself after a regular interval is called as periodic and this behavior is called as periodicity some of the atomic properties of the elements are periodic what are the properties they are atomic radius ionic radius ionization energy electronegativity electron affinity they show a regular periodicity and hence they are called as periodic properties what are periodic properties here the first one atomic radius second one ionic radius third one ionization energy fourth one electronegativity and the fifth one electron affinity come to the first one atomic radius atomic radius of an atom is defined as the distance between the center of the nucleus in metals what are metals here calcium magnesium sodium so it is the distance between the center of the nucleus and the outermost shell containing the valence electrons atomic radius in metals is known as metallic radius and it is defined as the half the distance between the nuclei of adjacent metals in metal atoms in non metallic elements what are non metallic elements hydrogen nitrogen oxygen these are non metallic elements the atomic radius is also called the covalent radius because of this it is defined as the half the distance between the nuclei of two covalent bonded atoms of the same element in a molecule let us for example let us consider the hydrogen molecule hh so the distance between the two hydrogen nuclei of the molecule is 0.474 angstrom the covalent radius is 0.37 angstrom so 0.74 divided by 2 is equal to 0. 37 angstrom so the covalent radius is 0.37 angstrom along the period the atomic radius from left to right the atomic radius of the element decreases why it decreases mean here the shell number remains same the shell number remains same but the number of uh, protons increases more and more positive charges here and uh, it has a strong attraction over the electrons and the electron cloud shrinks towards the nucleus so along the period from left to right the atomic radius of the element decreases along the groups from top to bottom the atomic radius increases the moving down it increases the valence shell the number of electrons down the group and why here it is increases means the valence shell number increases valence shell number increases means the distance between the valence shell and the nucleus increases so when moving down from top to bottom the atomic radius increases so along the period the atomic radius decreases and moving down from top to uh, top to down along the group it increases now come to the lithium and boron 
lithium. Both of them have the uh, valence electrons here, uh, atomic number 3, so 2 comma 1. And here atomic number 5, it is has 2 comma 3. Here the variation in the atomic radius. Now come to the second property. It is defined as the distance from the center of the nucleus of the ion up to that point when it exerts the influence of the electron cloud of the ion. You know that ions are formed. How the ions are formed? When an atom loses an electron, it becomes a positive charge particle or positive charge ion. It is called a cation. When an atom gains the electron, it forms a negatively charged particle and it, and it, it gains electron, so it is called as an anion. The size of the cation is always smaller than the neutral atom, but the anion is larger than its neutral atom. For example, lithium and sodium, they lose a single electron from their outermost shell and to form a cation. When the ions are formed, the remaining electrons are at the inner shells and attracted more strongly by the nucleus. In the same way, chlorine and fluorine, they become positive ions because they gaining electrons. When the electrons are added, the charge on the nucleus is not great enough to hold the increased number of electrons. So, an ionic radii, the Along the period, it decreases and along the group, it increases. So, atomic radius and ionic radius, along the period, it increases and along the, along the period, it, increase, it decreases. Along the group, it increases. The third one, ionization energy. What is ionization energy? It is the minimum energy required to remove an electron from a gaseous atom in its ground state to form a cation. It forms a cation plus. It is otherwise called as ionization energy. And it is measured in kJ per mole. Higher the ionization energy, it is more difficult to remove the electrons. For example, the atomic size decreases from left to right in a period. More energy is required to remove the electrons. So, High ionization energy increasing along the period. When we are moving down the group, the atomic size increases. The valence electrons are loosely bound. So, they require a less energy for the removal of electrons. So, the ionization energy decreases down the group in the periodic table. As the positive charge increases, the size of the cation decreases. As the negative charge increases, the size of the anion increases. Now come to the fourth property, electron affinity. Electron affinity is the amount of energy released when a gaseous atom gains an electron to form an anion. It is measured in kJ per mole and it is rep represented by the following equation. An element, chlorine, it gains one electron to form a chloride ion because it has some energy is released here. Okay, so it's like ionization energy in electron affinity also increases from left to right and from moving down it decreases. Noble has, no, has no tendency to lose or gain the electrons because here the electron affinity is zero. Now come to the last property, electronegativity. Electronegativity of an element is defined as the Tendency of an atom to attract the shared pair of electrons towards itself to form a covalent bond. Let us consider the hydrogen chloride. Both hydrogen and chlorine atom share one electron to form a covalent bond between them. Chlorine atom has a high electronegativity and it pulls the shared pair of electrons towards itself more strongly than hydrogen. When the bond breaks, the bonding electrons with chlorine forming H plus and Cl minus ions. It is represented uh, diagrammatically below, below here. Here weak pull, here strong pull. Here you can see here H plus. It, when the bond breaks, it forms into H plus and Cl minus. This is the 
diagrammatic explanation. The electronegativity is based upon the various experimental data such as bond energy, ionization potential, electron affinity, etc. The spalling scale. The spalling scale is used to find out or determine the electronegativity in which can it is to find or predict the nature of bonding is ionic or covalent between the atoms in a molecule. The electronegativity of some of the elements are given below. Fluorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, hydrogen, sodium. Fluorine has the electronegativity 4.0. Fluorine 3.0. Bromine 2.8. Iodine 2.5. Hydrogen 2.1. Sodium 1. If the difference in electronegativity between two elements is 1.7 means the bond is 50% ionic character and 50% covalent character. Now the difference between the electronegativity difference is less than 1.7 means the bond is considered to be a covalent. For example, uh, hydrogen fluoride, sodium iodide, sodium hydride, hydrogen iodide, these are the examples of covalent. The difference is greater than 1.7 means the bond is considered to be a ionic. What are the ionic examples? Sodium bromide, sodium iodide, sodium fluoride. These are the examples that they have the electronegativity greater than 1.7. So they are considered to be a ionic bond. So along the period from left to right in the periodic table, the electronegativity increases because of the increase in the nuclear charge in which can attract the electrons more strongly. But on moving down, the electronegativity of the elements decreases because of the increased number of energy levels. Here the energy levels increases, here the electron charge increases. So along the period from left to right, the electronegativity increases, so moving down, it decreases. Now you recall the properties. What is the first property? Atomic radius. What is atomic radius? Atomic radius of an atom is defined as the distance between the center of the nucleus and the outermost shell containing the valence electron. What is the second property? Ionic radii. Ionic radii is defined as the distance from the center of the nucleus of the ion up to point and it exerts the influence of the electron cloud of the ion that is a two ion cation and a anion. What does ionization energy? Ionization energy is the minimum energy required to remove an electron from a gaseous atom to form a cation and it is also called as ionization enthalpy. The fourth one, what is electron affinity? Electron affinity is the amount of energy released when a gaseous atom gains an electron to form an anion. The last one, the fifth one, electronegativity. Electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to attract the short pair of electrons towards itself in a covalent bond. So, these are the very, very important properties of, uh, the properties, five properties. So, you learn and write these five properties and do the assignment also. In periodic properties, the first two properties, atomic radius and ionic radius, it decreases in period, but it increases in groups. Then the third, fourth and fifth, ionization energy, electron affinity, Electronegativity, it increases in periods and it decreases in groups. These are about the five properties of this periodic properties. So, thank you students and do the assignment predict the nature of the bond in the following molecule. Sodium chloride, sodium bromide, sodium iodide, sodium fluoride and sodium hydride and do the assignment also.